Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, A Clear Vision Beyond 2020. We're going to look at maximizing demand generation and application completion for the junior and sophomore audience. I am your host, Drew Miller, Director of College Partnerships here at Platform Q Education, and excited to share some research and insights with you guys. Just a few quick housekeeping items. First off, so sorry for the 2020 vision joke. Uh, we had to. It's 2020 and it's February, so I can't guarantee we won't do it again. Uh, second, uh, my colleague Dave is manning the chat function. Obviously, I'm presenting, so I can't present and chat at the same time, but uh, uh, Dave is an actual person, not a chat bot, so please feel free to just tap on the chat and give him a little hello. He'd love to say hi, or any questions you might have throughout the webinar, please feel free to, to ask. And then my final uh, housekeeping point is Please make sure and stay on after to complete the post webinar survey. Just a few quick three to five questions. Would love to get your feedback. Uh, always helps us to improve. So let's dive in. Uh, who are we? We are the engagement experts. We have 15 years of online engagement strategy and ex execution experience. Uh, we're the leading developer of best in class software for omni channel engagement. And what we mean by that is simply we look at what is uh, up and coming as well as what is tried and true in terms of online engagement. And we bring them all together into a cohesive and strategic plan. And then finally, that leads me into the integration piece. We're really an integrated partner wanting to drive success across all those different online engagement channels. And we even take that a step further and we want to look at who you might be partnering with and work in tandem with them to make sure that we're driving, again, driving success for you and ultimately your students. When we look at the past in terms of you know, search and, and that sort of thing, 15 or 20 years ago, there's really a limited number of providers where you could go to work with to get your data to build your prospect pools. There were those few companies like you know, ACT, College Board, and, and NRCCUA collecting data. And of course, then marketing to students was really one-sided meaning that students would receive the mailers, they receive postcards, and later on emails, and they'd respond accordingly. This meant that you really, your results were somewhat predictable. You knew that if your goal was X enrollments, that you could back into that number by using you know, historical conversions to know how many admits you would need. And based on prior admit rates, you'd know how many applications you need and so on. And of course, you know, the, the, the way that we engage with students uh, you know, looked a lot like this. It was travel, it was email, uh, later, later it came SEO, et cetera. But of course today, search has evolved. The internet really changed everything and, and really empowered the student to be able to do their own search. Of course, the, the places that students can engage with you and the places you can get data from have really exploded as well. Of course, the, the tests and survey companies, they still exist, but there are a number of other sources and methods from digital marketing, social media, a common app and more that really lead to significantly less predictable conversions. In fact, data from the National Center for Education Statistics indicates that the number of applications institutions have to generate to yield one enrollment has actually doubled over the last 15 years. And during that time, yield of admitted students has dropped by as much as 50%. What that means is that you're having to do nearly double the amount of work for the same net result. And when we look at today's reality, it makes sense. When you look at by the end of this year, over 80% of the web traffic is going to be video streaming. Nine out of 10 students watch videos from college. And I love to make the joke that the, that last remaining student just doesn't have the internet. The reality is, is everyone's watching videos online. And of course, just like with us and any kind of brand experience we might have as consumers online, a bad experience with, with your institution's brand online can cause a student to immediately stop considering you. And of course, nearly half of students would prefer a website uh, would prefer chat over those other channels. And of course, video is not going away. Uh, uh, as we, I, I thought this, this uh, study was really interesting by, uh, it was a co-branded study by BrandLive and IBM where just across all types of organizations, video, the use of video is increasing in helping those organizations meet or exceed their business objectives. Of course, they're using video more and more, increasing frequency, and they're employing more video use cases. I thought it was so interesting, the, the most important videos, I don't know if you can see this it's a little, little zoomed in, but the most important features of a video solutions platform based on those needs are things like live video capture, mobile viewing capabilities, uh, customized branded user experience, no download required, required for users. Of course, the integrations into your CRM and, and so forth mobile production, all those, all those different things are in, incredibly important. And of course, what that means is the way that students engage has evolved. 
First, we know and we can recognize that based on the e expectations data that over nine in 10 students watch videos from colleges. This really proves that video is a necessary component of an engagement strategy. But then the question becomes, well, what kind of video should I be using? It's not so much should I be using video, it's, it's what kind of video should I be using? And of course, we know based on Edge Adventures uh, student sentiment research that content that's branded by an institution is rated as the most trusted content, particularly on the web. This makes total sense given that a student knows when you go to your EDU site, for example, it's official versus what they may go find on a college review or a ranking site. And then finally, additional research indicates that current students and admissions counselors are ranked and rated as among the most influential connections a student can make. This also makes sense when you kind of think about how current students have the ability to share their unbiased and authentic experience of life on campus. And of course, admissions officers are seen as the student's guide and advocate throughout the whole process. So again, what that means is students are looking for that easy access, immediate response, and they're looking for a customized experience that's branded to your institution and they want it on demand. Of course, that presents a lot of challenges, right? When we look at kind of the, the, the kind of content that's being generated on social media platforms, it's a, the, the, the video content has a very short shelf life. So there's a demand for an increase in content. Of course, you have those resource constraints. It's not like someone waves a magic wand and all of a sudden you've got uh, a marketing firm at your disposal to, to generate a bunch of content all the time. Of course, there's this increase in channels as well where uh, students and, um, and consumers alike are all uh, looking at different channels all the time. And of course, there's this re reduced amount of time as a result of all these needs and all of your other priorities that are, that are uh, 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 trying to come, you know, tr come, come together at the same time. So there, there's a real challenge here. And of course, what we're talking about when we talk about this as a whole is really the mass customization of the prospective student experience at scale. It's one of our partners at, at BU shared. So the whole idea here is, is layering those communication channels to boost conversion and yield. Uh, you know, travel, email, direct mail, phone, they don't go anywhere. They still absolutely have their place along the entire uh, student journey. However, you want to start layering in other pieces as well throughout the entire experience. So things like digital advertising, texting, of course, webcasting, streaming, and live online chats all have their place and are extremely effective in, in uh, conversion and yield of students uh, across, the uh, across the student uh, timeline. And of course, what we know and what we have seen is when you align strategic marketing plans with your omni-channel engagement, you will absolutely see a higher response and yield. When you're where, where students are 24 seven, you will see that higher, higher conversion and yield. What that means for our partners is on average, we see an average in, in application generation from inquiry to app, an average increase of 35%, an average of uh, application completion. So there's app incompletes when we re-engage them with this type of method, it's uh, an additional 25% in application completion. And then when we look at the entire uh, inquiry to yield, uh, uh, inquiry to deposit, we see an average increase of 10%. Of course, that, that number changes depending on the institution type and its challenges and that sort of thing. But across the board, within the first year, this is what our partners see in terms of results. Well, that sounds great, but online engagement planning is re really important. We recognize that, but there's a huge challenge there as well. It's how do you get started? There's so many different things out there. There's standalone texting and chat solutions. There might be a poorly branded experience if you just get something that's downloadable and out of the box. You might have trouble sending consistent communication via your CRM. Of course, one-off webinar solutions can be a challenge if you forget to do things like record or download. Um, of course, thinking from all the student perspectives as well, having to log in or create a password or download something and sign up, it can be frustrating. And on top of all of this, staff turnover. Who's really carrying the leadership stake? And if, so, if you lose someone or that, that person leaves, who really owns this process? So. I'd love to share how a couple of our partners have leveraged this uh, online webcasting, streaming chat uh, type of uh, strategy to really improve their enrollment outcomes. So we'll look at three of our partners, Western Connecticut State University, University of Missouri, Kansas City, and the University of Tampa. We'll look at how they leverage this continuous and consistent omni-channel online engagement. So looking at Western Connecticut State, uh, founded in 1903, located in Danbury, Connecticut, uh, four different schools, uh, enrollment around 5,000 students, 600 uh, graduate students. 
the challenge was the declining yield in admitted students uh, over, over the past few years. And they wanted to generate organic excitement. They wanted to stand out in a crowded marketplace. But, and they were completely fine engaging with students in multiple, multiple mediums. They wanted to try new things. Of course, they wanted to continue utilizing email, uh, uh, regular mail. Um, and they started incorporating things like text, social media, video. But when we started to partner together, they didn't really have that cohesive plan put together quite yet. So we partnered together in, in uh, early 2019, and we did a last minute yield push. And we pushed out text, emails. Um, of course, they they uh, utilized social media to in, you know, invite students to the to the group. Um, they kind of uh, this was their uh, uh, kind of overall yield push. Um, they did some contests on social media, um, etc. And then they also partnered with us. And their new initiative was leveraging Conduit to host live video events. And the two they tried were student panels, where they it was a few st current students and it was ask me anything, and then parent financial aid tutorials. And this is what their page looked like. Again, branded to the institution, looks, acts, and feels like Western Connecticut State University. And the, the outcomes were unbelievable. Within, uh, they're, 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 they saw an immediate boost in social media engagement as they streamed those live student panels to social. They saw over 150 students attend that live student panel and they continued to view it on demand after it was completed. Their student headcount jumped six points in just a week, and they erased a 50-student freshman de de deficit by May 1st. And as a result of that, they said, we have to build this into our, our, our broader enrollment plan. So they built a, a year-long plan using the, the, the webcasting capabilities for campus visits, for registering for classes, for financial aid. Again, they continue to do those, those Ask Me Anything student panels. And they are extremely happy to have this as part of their, an integral part of their uh, uh, recruitment plan. Looking at UMKC, University of Missouri, Kansas City, uh, urban institution located in Kansas City, Missouri, the largest comprehensive fully accredited university in the, the Kansas City area. They're around 8,000 undergraduate, 5,000 graduate profes uh, professional. Um, again, students from all 50 states, over 125 different areas of study. What they wanted to do was a late, they came on board with us at the beginning of last year and wanted to perform a late stage senior search. And so what they did is they actually took their chat tool, plugged it into their admissions page, and they invited their late stage search and their senior inquiries to just learn more uh, on the website while they hosted a live chat. And if students wanted to, they could ask a chat, but by doing so, they had to fill out, you know, first name, last name, email. And in doing so, UMKC identified nearly 40 new inquiries during that four hour chat. At the same time, they started executing a really robust webcasting plan. Um, over, the course they, over the course of uh, the 2019, as they were finishing up the 2019 yield cycle, they saw over 800 unique uh, visitors. They had 1100, over 1,100 chat activities, over 1,400 page activities. And they, they really mixed up the strategy with live and semi-live content or, or content that was pre-recorded. Um, of course, that, that, that means less lift for our team if it's pre-recorded. And of course, they also stream their orientation preview on Facebook Live and they saw over 600 plus views. The big piece here too is that they immediately started delivering event activity back to their Slate CRM. And we've automated that via uh, scheduling on a, on, a, on a SFTP. Because of that, they were able to track their outcomes. And they were able to report back to us that of the admitted students who participated in an online chat, 100% of those students in ultimately ended up enrolling. And of the admitted students who participated in a webcast, it was 82% of those students ultimately ended up enrolling. And I think one of the things I love is they share with us their next highest performing channel as it pertained to their admitted students was, uh, was phone calling and they converted about 35%. So as you see, this can be a really powerful uh, tool if, if, if properly leveraged. And of course, because of that, they saw around 800 enrollments ultimately influenced by, by webcasting and chat. The other piece that I love about what they did is once they, once they got through the 2019 cycle, they moved into the fall, they created a set it and forget it schedule. So they recruit, they recorded a few specific types of content live one time. So application workshop, life as a student, open house, etc., And then they reuse those throughout the fall semester and throughout the uh, throughout the fall cycle to help engage students so not not a huge uh, not huge extra in terms of, of lift for them 
And of course, again, we're talking about a multi-channel approach. Webcasting and chat have their place at every step along the process from prospect to enrolled student. So final stories about our, our friends in Tampa, the University of Tampa. Just in case you were wondering what it looks like, this is what Tampa looks like in March. It's absolutely beautiful, it's sunny, it's warm uh, by, the, uh, uh, by the ocean. And for Tampa, our, this was back in uh, March 2018, uh, they were preparing to go to New England for a admitted student event. And if you haven't seen New England in March, this is what it looks like. So the challenge was, is that their flights got canceled and they were looking at having to cancel their admitted student event in New England. So what they did was they actually came to us and said, what if we hosted this event on our conduit platform and, and invited those students from New England? And we said, that's a great idea. What if we opened it up to all of your admitted students and see who we can get from, from different areas of the country. What was amazing about that is that they saw 168 attendees attend this last minute admitted student event. And not only did they see students from New England, they saw students from all over the country, including the Tampa Bay area. Of course, those and, and, and what they normally see as a 50 to 75 uh, in, uh, students at their in-person events. Of those 168 attendees, 94 of those students enrolled which is 56% uh, yield, 35% above their average. And here's what it looked like. Again, genuine, authentic type experience for the students that are logging in. That's our friend Anthony and one of his uh, admissions counselors, just welcoming and, and, and uh, 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 sharing a, you know, quick, quick celebration to their admitted students. Again, event attendee distribution, Huge emphasis on, on the New England area, of course, but they saw students from all over the country as well as Florida. Of course, fast forward to 2019, and they said, we absolutely need to do this again. This is unbelievable. So March 2019, they, they leveraged our marketing services where we had more of a cadence to promote the event. We had more time. We leveraged personalized URLs so we could see who was coming and who, was, who actually ended up attending. We embedded those into text invites, into email invites, and last, last spring, they saw 571 students attend that admitted student event. And of those, 394 students enrolled. And melt by those conduit impact students was 3% lower than their average melt, which tends to hover around that 10 to 15% range. Looking at that event yield uh, distribution, they went international. So they saw students from all over the country, also some students from Central America and Europe. They were unbelievably excited about those results. And of course, no good work goes unpunished. So they kept a great thing going. And of course, uh, for uh, July of last year, they did an orientation event as well. They saw 376 live attendees asking over 200 questions during an online pre-orientation event and saw nearly a 50% boost in visibility during the on-demand period. So once that, that live uh, content was captured, it was made available on demand and they saw a huge boost in visibility afterwards. Again, some really amazing stories from our partners of how they've they've leveraged a webcasting and chat to uh, as a strategy to uh, help along uh, students across the funnel for every point in terms of conversion and yield. And really, the formula is is pretty straightforward. Step one, it really looks like developing those four key content pieces or live events that help drive conversion and yield. So we look at where you're at in the process, what's top of mind. It could be for the uh, for the sophomore and the uh, junior audience at search, it's more about discovery content, right? They want to learn more about the institution. They want to see the institution. They want to see people at the institution or graduates of the institution and so forth. Again, that trusted content on that branded site. Um, and then, of course, uh, moving through the funnel, application content, more story content, and of course, financial aid as well, uh, helping inform them at every step of the process. But that's step one is where are you at in the process? What type of, of content should be top of mind right now? And how do we begin to execute that? And of course, step two is aligning the engagement marketing um, to help maximize participation and conversion. So that's where the managed services from, from our team come into play, where we develop this content to get students to the platform. And of course, they're able to consume it across every device and, and platform. Uh, we can stream to social, et cetera. And then, of course, once we've got it up and running, like that example from UMKC, it's really about executing a continuous and consistent engagement plan from the top of the funnel, everything from information sessions and, of course, moving down application workshops all the way to 
uh, pre-arrival where you're sharing things like how to register for classes, how to register for housing, uh, meal plans, and so forth. So that's it. Really appreciate your time. Again, the, the, the real big takeaway here is that understanding that when institutions align online engagement with the broader recruitment plans, they are going to see better conversion and yield at each step of the process. So again, would really appreciate your feedback. As soon as I hit the end button here, you'll be able to take that survey and would really appreciate your feedback. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.